So Chris, uh, first off, thank you for taking a little bit of your time. I appreciate it and congratulations on the Tomorrow War, which is, I think it's, it's, it's one of my favorite films of the year so far. So uh, thank you for having, uh, having me here. Thank you. I, I love that shelf of uh, stuff that you've got back there between Gizmo and uh, <laughs> Yoda Thanks. and both Kermit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Chris, <clears throat> obviously with the film out, uh, it, be, it, it, just, it just became such a big hit for the, for the streaming giant and uh, millions of people have watched it around the world. So I wanted to ask you first, how do you feel uh, being the one, the director, the one that created this film? How does it feel for millions and millions of people to, to actually in, enjoy the film you did after hard work and, and actually want more of this world? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, look, I, I feel very lucky because I was able to uh, to to be able to make a movie like this. I feel, feel very fortunate. I had a great cast, had a great crew. Um, it, you know, as a filmmaker, being able to reach out to uh, you know millions of people around the world is kind of a dream come true, right? Like you you get to to have to, to have responses from people from everywhere, from every corner of, of the world, and for for people to you know, to fall in love with, with Chris Pratt's character and the white spikes and, and, and JK and Yvonne and all that kind of thing. That's it's yeah, it's really, it's really rewarding. It's amazing. <laughs> so in the, in the film, obviously we'll, we'll talk spoilers a little bit. Uh, there's a cool, insane, there's a lot of cool, memorable, insane scenes, but uh, looking back, is there a scene, I, I guess, yes, but is there a scene you cut out that now you wish you could put in, put back in maybe? And, <laughs> and, and if so, how do you think it would help or improve the film? There's a scene with uh, there's a scene with Betty uh, Betty Gilpin uh, who played Chris's wife Emmy. Um, there's a scene with her that was uh, it was set after the events uh, you know in 2022 in the World Cup. It's, it was set in the sort of the okay. year later, uh, but before Chris goes off to war, and you got to. First off, Betty is amazing. Betty's an yes. amazing actor, and uh, she fucking killed uh, in the scene. <laughs> she was incredible. Um, every take was a gift. Every every single thing that she did was amazing, um, and different. Uh, each one a different thing too, because we we're trying some stuff. And she was she's a gifted, really gifted improviser, dramatically uh, as well as comedically. She's she's wonderful. It's a scene that's right. a little bit about the backstory of their relationship. It's a scene that's that's uh, that, that that gives you a little bit more of a clue as to maybe the path that uh, Chris Pratt's uh, character had been on in the past. And that's a scene that I wish was still in the movie. It made the movie longer. It's it yeah. it, 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 it kept you from getting to some <laughs> of the sci-fi elements a little bit yeah. more. But um, it was already a long movie. Uh, but that's a scene that uh, that I really wish that we could have found a way uh, to keep. That's cool. Uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the film also is obviously the creatures, the monsters, the aliens. They're horrible and they're relentless. So there's a scene in particular where we first actually see the creatures, not only as viewers ourselves, but the actual characters of the film. So I'm talking about the stairwell, stairwell yeah. scene with the flashlights where you zoom in and the alien is just sitting there breathing. It's just yeah. horrible. It's yeah. awesome. So was this reveal always part of the plan of your plan that specific shot or did you have other options as to revealing the monsters and if so why did you choose it choose this way yeah i you know i'd always wanted to do something like this in the movie um i guess the reason why i chose it that's a good question like i guess you know to think in, in you know kind of i wanted something there's obviously going to be a mission that they had to be on in the middle of the in the middle of sort of the the war um, I wanted something where they were really, they were really vulnerable. So I wanted it to be kind of an enclosed space. Um, yes. I wanted it to be a place where maybe the creatures were feeding. So you got a sense, you know, you were talking about the breathing, right? And I liked, I wanted it to be in a place where they were at there. They weren't out in the street running and gunning, killing people where you sort of encountered them like that. Maybe yeah. in another movie, I wanted it to be in a place where, you know, our heroes are in a vulnerable, vulnerable place. Our creatures are, are are not as vulnerable. Obviously, they've got sort of the the you know the high ground, so to speak. Um, uh, but uh, uh, not to quote not to quote Re 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 Revenge of the Jedi or Re Revenge of the Sith. Um, I have the high ground. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's <laughs> that's mean, awesome. I so I didn't mean to quote that. Uh, so that's that's awesome. So you're saying that I didn't see it like that that way. Now it's it's even more awesome because you you kind of like interrupt them 
because yeah. they're like maybe eating or doing something and they're interrupted and then it's mayhem. So that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Staying with the monsters, can you tell me a little bit about the process of the design? Because like I told you, it's, it's, they're awesome. And how long did it take up to, you know, get to the final design? Because I saw a little bit of aliens. I saw like kind of Edge of Tomorrow, like, even the, the big Cloverfield monster I yeah. saw in them. So they were, they were fantastic. So can you tell me a little bit about, about that? Yeah, well, you know, working with Ken Bartholomew, like, uh, yeah. you know, he's a really incredible creature designer. Um, he and Peter Wenham and Jamie Price, Peter Wenham, the production designer, Jamie Price, visual effects supervisor. And the three, the four of us, five of us all worked together to uh, come up with something that, that, you know, I wanted to feel hungry. I wanted to feel ancient. I wanted to feel, I wanted them to, to have a feral intelligence. I wanted them to be able to communicate with each other and run plays like coyotes and wolves. Yes. So there was lots of that that I was trying to, you know, put into the creature and Ken just did an amazing job of synthesizing all that. It, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it took, uh, you know, it, it took a minute to, to put all that stuff together. Um, but, you know, we were also really under the gun to get the movie out because we had a, we had Chris Pratt's schedule and we had, you know, there's only a certain amount of time. So, so my, I was on the, I was on the movie like four or five months before the movie. I was hired on the movie four or five months before we started shooting. So I had to sort of jump in and start to get everything going. So it was, there's a fairly compressed amount of time to get it going, but we, we were able to, 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 yeah, to, to get to a place with stuff that we liked. Yeah. Nice. So Chris, uh, wrapping up, uh, we've heard rumblings of sequel. Are you game for it? Uh, did you, while you were doing the first one, have a rough idea of what you could do for a sequel? Uh, or are you just sitting down and now, you know, trying to figure out what would make sense for you to, you know, do it? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the movie is told from Chris Pratt's character's perspective, from Dan's perspective. So the movie, it only sees what Dan sees. Chris Pratt is in every single scene. So the movie can only, I, I made the choice to only see what Dan sees. So there is, there are a lot of, you know, whether it's, whether it's from the time travel mm -hmm. perspective, the amount, you know, the sort of branching out of what happened once the, once the future people created the wormhole. There's, there's sort of, there's sort of stories there, there, there is, there's a few, a few there's many things <laughs> that are, uh, that, that are avenues for, for stories in this world. Um, and, and the creatures, you know, and their world and who brought them there and that world and all of that kind of thing. So to me, there's a lot of, we, we, we were, we were always talking about, you know, you both, we're only seeing the, we're only seeing the events in this perspective from this one man's perspective. And he's also got the relationship with his daughter and with the relationship with his father, a lot of other things on his mind. So we're seeing it in this tunnel vision way. I'm hoping well, obviously with a sequel now, there's interesting ways that we can start to talk about the creature, start to talk about the complexities of the time travel is created, what, what time travel is created in this world. Um, and also I, you know, my favorite version is to bring some of our, some of the characters back that, uh, that we really like. So, so that all That's those things I hope get into a sequel, but no, nobody was sitting there going, we, you know, we, you know, for sure, this is a movie, I have a sequel. There's a movie that's been made <laughs> as a one-off, uh, thing and, um, and, and yeah, but, but there's all, but to me, there's. There's a lot of and I, and, I, and, I, and as a fan, I appreciate that because it feels like a one-off. But now, it, it, it creates a lot of possibilities that people, yeah. if people want it, you know, you could give it yeah. to them. So I, I, I'm going to give you my two cents. Get yeah. some, uh, get Betty Gilpin in there with some action so she can kick ass, which is awesome. Yeah. So yeah. you, you yeah. could do that. So yeah. uh, Chris, uh, thank you again for your time and congratulations again on the Tomorrow World. It's just a blast. You can watch it right now on, on Amazon Prime Video. So thank you, Chris. Thank Have a you. good one. Good Take care. Bye-bye.